Ghana. <laughs> I'm so cool, I went to Africa. Back at school, they were laughing at us. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And as you can see, your boy is still here in the perfect, peaceful place that I vlogged about. And you know what? I told you guys that it's a Ghanaian owned. The owner is a Ghanaian. And I, I would definitely want to talk to her. I mean, do you really want to talk to me? Yeah, sure. Why not, Mr. <laughs> Ghana, baby? I am fire. My name is. Ga Should I introduce myself? Yes, please. Oh, my name is Ghana, baby, and the annoying village boy from oh, Ghana. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about you. Who are you? My name is Patricia Chi. Ajua. Patricia Chi. Most uh, people in Ghana do uh, my hometown. Okay. Uh, so, me Ghana name Ajua for you. Ajua for you. So which means that you're a Ghanaian. Yes. I draw for you. I draw for you. Like when I came in here and I saw this beautiful resort, yeah. I was really amazed. Are you from a royal family? Because Ashanti people, all of them are royals, you know. Are you from a royal I'm family? I'm from a crazy or just like you. Oh. Village girl. <laughs> Oh, village girl. Village girl just like you. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not a village girl. No. You know. Village in the sense of Ghana. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ghana girl. No, you're you're not trying to say that Ghana is a village, no. no but you're born in a village in Ghana. From. Oh, okay. Massive Crowfrom. And so city girl, actually. City right? girl. <laughs> so how come, like, a girl from the village managed okay. to build this beautiful resort in here? Yes, yes. I owe the, the site, like this location, to my late mom, who's Which? actually like my older um, mom. I would say my mom's older sister. Okay, you know, Mary. She actually found the place because I had a dream to like come up with a perfect peaceful place. Okay, kind of like Disney World. I went there when I was a kid, and I was blown away. I thought, oh my God, is this heaven or what? So, which means that you've lived in America? Before? Yes, I've lived in America for oh. quite some time. How long? Over thirty years. <laughs> Over 30 years in America, yeah. and you decided to leave America and come back to Ghana? Yes, I did. I did, actually. What, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? <laughs> I know. That's what my friends are. They're like, Patricia, oh. you what? You are going to where? To live in Africa? Like, are you crazy, girl? And I'm like, no. Like, I had a dream, you, you know? I was aching. I worked for IBM, and I mean, great company. I, I loved, you know, working for IBM as a systems engineer. But... Since the day I walked into Disney World, I was determined to grow up fast and build one in Ghana. So, you know, this is my Disney. Disney, do you hear me? You know, this oh. is our Disney World. <laughs> you know what? Um, I'm really amazed that you left America to come settle in Ghana because, you know, like there's so many people out there who say America is heaven and uh, they really don't want to leave that country for anyone else. But let's talk about you coming back to Ghana. You lived in America for over 30 years mm -hmm. and you left all that to come settle in Ghana. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm so proud of you, you. but I just want to know what were the kind of challenges that you faced when you started establishing this place? Okay, so I started this when I was really, really young. I think I must have bought the land around 16 or 17 and people were like, hey, 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 what did you do? I worked at McDonald's when I was a kid, you know, and since I had that dream, that I was going to build this place. Like I tell you, everything you see, the architect, I designed everything. I used to close my eyes and see it. So I would tell the architect like, oh, this is how I see it. This is how I see the workplace and stuff. You put it together. You, you, you get what I mean? So basically, because I was so young, I didn't know a lot of stuff about Africa. I, I, all I was going to do was come here, build a huge Disney World-ish, you know? <laughs> and like, I thought, a month or six months from the day I finished building it, it would be so busy, we would be making money, it would be just like Disney World. I had no idea. And I mean, obviously, thinking as a young kid when I bought it, this at 16, you don't really know the realities of things. And I hadn't lived in Africa. I left when I was a kid. So I didn't really know how things work here. So I picked up myself. I, I mean, I had visited Ghana like maybe four to five times before I decided to move in 2010. Okay. And I just picked up myself. I shipped my car, I shipped everything in my house. I told my friends, like, I'm out. Like, okay, Patricia, like, Ghanaians are like, you're going to be back, you know? 
and my foreign friends are like, Patricia, this is a little crazy. I mean, just reconsider. And I'm like, no, because there was this burning sensation inside me to do something like go home. You, you, you know what I mean? Mm. And at that time, my aunt was still alive and she wasn't that well. So I was like, well, you know, I killed two birds with one stone. I get to live my dream and I get to take care of her. It was like a win-win situation for me. Packed up 2010 and boom, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. And um, establishing this whole um, resort, I mean, me, I just want to know, like, because sometimes when people come in here, they say, oh, things are easy, things are that. I just want to know, was it easy establishing this? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, well, I, like, if I say it's been 20 years and, you know, I mean, it looks beautiful, but yeah. a lot of work had to go into it and a lot of hurdles that we had to jump and i know you've been in ghana you know how things no work. i don't know how things work <laughs> let me act as if i don't know how things work but just let me know was it easy if not what are the kind of difficulties that you faced and uh, like when... for starters yeah it took me four years just to register the name wagon resort i really thought it was ridiculous and i think some of it may have been i didn't live in ghana so you know i'll get like two weeks three weeks off I fly to Ghana, I'm trying to get a company registered and you know, you get the run around, you know, come back tomorrow, nobody's in the office, light off, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So it's like, okay, my two weeks is up, I, I, I have to go back. So I kept doing that over the years and you know, four years later, needless to say, I got it registered, you know, <laughs> registered. After four years. <laughs> four years. And the day that we actually did it, it took me five minutes. So I thought, why? Like, if you are calling people in the diaspora to come home, mm. you are telling us, you know, come back home, return, year of return, all of that stuff, and we are returning, and it's going to take us four years to register a company. I mean, it's ridiculous. Maybe mm. there are shortcuts, mm. maybe there are ways to get it registered, but I came in, I was ready to work, ready to register a company, and needless to say, if you register a company, I mean, taxes are gonna come in mm. for the government mm. so therefore why make it difficult you know yeah. but it was and I think you know people are still going through difficulties trying to establish themselves and you know some of the people out there who want to come back and establish companies and stuff you know there are a few hurdles you must cross yes. before or you have to cross yes. you don't have to but you know you're gonna have to cross before you finally settle in or make it after all the difficulties that you faced mm -hmm. you managed to establish this beautiful resort in here mm -hmm. but i just want to know just be honest to me do you think that it's worth it to establish something like that in africa like um in the sense of some of us wanting to help mm. like you know like you get this like an obligation it's like it, it make moral obligation that you want to help mm. right so I think it's worth it to establish something you can sort of help because we need jobs in Ghana exactly. in Africa our young people are running away you know sleeping in front of embassies mm. trying to get visas to go abroad and clean floors get killed nowadays i mean <laughs> it's the harsh reality exactly. and look at this we got exactly. plantains we got cassava become a farmer i know it's not that easy but i think some of us you know you get that calling to yeah. do something and farms it, 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 seems, it seems you want to be a farmer because when i came in i realized that you got everything here you got plantain you got banana coconut <laughs> yes. even maize <laughs> yeah that's right like the corn you eat here like Banku and, and all, all of that comes from here. Uh, we are about to eat fufu today. <laughs> <laughs> fufu, you know, the plantain, everything came from our farm. The cassava and all that. The cassava came from here. We have our oranges, we have our coconuts, uh, everything. We have tomatoes. Yeah, have I've seen it myself. Plants, I've know? seen it myself. Like everything is fresh in here. <laughs> She's not even joking. Seven. Wow. <laughs> So she runs a resort and a farm. <laughs> right? It's like, you know, we're not farmers or anything. Yeah. But there's an orange here, I'll show you later. Yeah. I was eating oranges and throwing the seeds. Like, oh, it's a farm, you will grow, you know, stuff like that. And like two weeks later, they grew. I was like, oh my God, like, oh my God. So I planted one and I'm thinking, wait, so is that easy to plant? You throw seeds and they grow? 
Oh, well, let's keep planting so, then. Yeah. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll so, be planting. Um, <laughs> my, my, my final question, who are the people that are welcome in here? Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Every, this, this is made by Guyanians for the world. For you the know, world. For the yeah, world. Everybody yeah. Everybody it, it's wild win results to the world. So you know exactly. what I'm going to do? Like, um, <laughs> I'm definitely going to try as much as possible for us to organize shows Yay. in here to support your business. That's you right. know, especially those we of you who live other. in Kumasi. I mean, from today onwards, bring that side chick. Bring that oh, wife no. of yours. Ah! No, no, no! I know, I know that my subscribers. No side the, chicks allowed. No, 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 no! Ah, come no, on! No, 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 no! Listen! No, no, no! No, no! Who allowed here again? No, 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 no! no. You see, like you guys should understand me, yeah? I, I feel you, bro. You know, I feel you. You know, it's so hard to choose one woman in Africa. Oh my God! Why is that? Don't because, get me started. No, no, no. because, Please, because, don't get because me started. we got we got we got so many beautiful women to the extent that you look at them like God. Pick I mean, one. That is why our ancestors. <laughs> You know, mm. practice polygamy because it was so hard I'm for them. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? Like we're gonna do this. I mean, bring anyone in here. I'm gonna put a number, her number in there. Please go check it out. I mean, call her and then come spend a weekend in here. Please bring the wives and the kids. No side chicks. No please. side chicks. No side chicks. Yes. Bring your wife. Thank bring you. your kids. Thank you, know, you so they, much. they got playgrounds even here. You can play even volleyball when you come in here. Yes. Table tennis is here. We want to play pool. Swimming. Everything is okay. Swimming. Like bonfires. <laughs> I mean, I want you to send a message to the African diaspora okay. out there. All right. So, like, um, my fellow blacks, please. I'm not asking people to like get up and move to Africa, but I think we've been lied to a lot. You know, like my close friends, Ghanaians born in america or raised in america or you know left when they were kids you know like myself a lot of us are brainwashed you think you come to ghana oh i'm, I'm not gonna have jobs um i'm not like what am i gonna do for a living like am i gonna be able to have a car have the kind of living so what you are in a village you have a farm you eat every day your kids can go to school free sss right exactly let me know that it's africa that you can live that quality of life check africa out don't i mean don't take somebody's word for it exactly come find out for yourself so, and then decide you know take it from there visit ghana and when you visit ghana don't just stay in accra please visit kumasi Kumasi. A wild <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah that was a message for the african yes, diaspora yes, not like, a message for africans living on the continent oh god <laughs> you have time <laughs> i have time Feel no free. now seriously like a lot of us we work hard in africa and then we take the money out of africa to travel like i saw um, and you know no offense to anybody out there but i saw during the pandemic that a lot of food were being given out and I think everything was rice. Rice, 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 foreign rice, come on. I mean, you know, buy Ghana made. Eat Ghana made is even healthier. Come on, but dear, um, Banchi, you know, eat our own. Let's support our own, support our farmers. You know, support Ghanaian businesses. Stop going to, I mean, no offense to the arrows, but come on, look at how they're treating us. Rich Ghanaians fly first class to the Arab countries and spend our hard earned money there. Look at this. You get here, you are African. This is yours. You get there, there are some places you can't even walk into. What is wrong with you, Africans? You know, let us start enjoying our own work hard stay in africa and let us prosper let's support each other